Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to my Unity tutorial series. And this tutorial, we're going to cover just the interface and the widgets for basic uh, movement about in our scene. Uh, now you'll notice that I actually have a very much custom uh, user interface. Uh, if your skin's not the dark skin, uh, then you need to get Pro if you want it. And if you already have Pro, then obviously by default you have the dark skin. Um, but you'll notice that I have a very... I have one set up for how I like it. For example, I have the console down here and I have project. Uh, generally have that a bit lower. Um, and I have the hierarchy here. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go back and talk about project. Uh, our project basically contains all of our assets and our folders which are used for organizing our project. And we can also create and add new pieces to it or we can you know drag and drop you know models textures uh, etc our console this is where all of our debug info will be spit out to and any errors will also be printed out here um, the Unity debugger is okay uh, it does an okay job pointing you to the right line so it's kind of useful um, but when we hit the programming tutorial series we'll cover some uh, tips on debugging all right now up here we have hierarchy and light mapping. Uh, let's cover light mapping real quick. Um, as you can see, it, obviously when you have the light mapper brought up, you get this option in our in your uh, scene viewport. Um, we're actually not going to talk about anything. That was it for the light mapper. Um, but later we will talk about what each of these does, and we will learn how to take full advantage of Unity 3D's integration of beast lighting. All right, now the hierarchy. Any objects that you create uh, in the scene will be added to the hierarchy. And in a later tutorial, we're going to take a real quick look at actually organizing the hierarchy. Uh, but for right now, we're not going to do that. And as you can see, um, let's create a cube. So click game object, create other. And we want to create a cube. Now, we'll cover the inspector in just a second, but you notice when we created our cube, it automatically added it to our hierarchy. Now, we could have clicked create and we could have dragged in, sorry, not drag and drop, but we could have clicked any of these and they would have automatically have added it to our hierarchy. Like we can click directional light. All right. And so there you go. Now, directional light's added in. So now, let's cover the inspector. Um, we'll cover this more in depth as this will be a tool we'll be using a lot as with all the tools inside of Unity. Um, but in the hierarchy, for example, we could reposition the cube to 0, 0, 0, which is way over there. And to do what I just did, um, hit F. Alright. And I'm going to bring our light over as well. And we can also change the rotation. Okay. So now we have a cube in our scene with a very simple light illuminating our cube. Okay, so now let's talk about the scene viewport. Um, you basically do all of, obviously, your level setups inside the scene viewport. And then when you want to play, whatever you have tested, you just click the little play button. And obviously right now you can see that we have our cube and it's lit by our directional light. All right, so let's hop back to our scene and it'll automatically do that when you click play. Uh, there are several different uh, modes. You can view it all inside of wireframe. You can view it in texture wireframe, which let's go ahead and move in a little bit closer. And as you can see, you see the material of our cube and you also see the outline of the wireframe. Now to move around inside the scene viewport, I'm um, very sorry I didn't mention this, you use WASD to move, Q to go down, E to go up, and you use right mouse to rotate the camera, just like you would in most other modern game engines. You can also use middle mouse to pan the camera, 
use left mouse to box select or just select an individual item and you could also hit and hold control to select items alright up here you have you can see the alpha by default to RBG you can see the overdraw and the mitmaps and we'll cover overdraw and mitmaps in a later tutorial now by default uh, I already had uh, show scene lighting uh, when this is checked sorry excuse me when this is not uh, toggled uh, you just get bare vertex lighting with an unlit scene and now we have our scene being lit as well uh, with that we'll also show the shadows if you have the light set to cast shadows the next one this will enable the skybox and it will get rid of the grid um, we're going to check that and the next one which we don't have any sound inside of our scene so it doesn't really do much good but if we had sound in our scene it would play it now over here uh, if you've ever used 3ds max or maya you might recognize this this is the uh, widget for rotating like to a different perspective so you could click x and then we're viewing it from the right y will be the top and z will be the front and you can also view it from the bottom pretty much all sides just by um, clicking these widgets now if you were to remove the camera right now you're in as it says isometric view uh, which can obviously create some kind of weird problems depending on your game unless you're making an isometric game it might be good um, so instead we're just going to click the center and this will reset it back to perspective view all right so now let's move on and go to the game view the game view is obviously a preview of what it would actually look like if you were to build and compile and run it standalone um, however it does have some nifty things like your stats it shows your draw calls how many triangles and vertices you're loading textures render textures screen VRAM usage vertex buffer objects visible screen meshes and network um, all of which will be covered as we go alternatively you can also well sorry not alternatively but you can also change the aspect ratio right now it's at free aspect then I changed it to 5.4 then 4.3 you can also set it to whatever the default for your standalone is which is 1024 by 768 I'm going to change it back to free aspect the next window that I have is the animation and we will cover this in a later tutorial and then we have the profiler which if we click play real quick and then jump back over and we'll need to select record and now as you can see our profiler is running and it's gathering some rather useful information we will cover the profiler in its own tutorial later and I'll click play all right now there's one more uh, window I want to show you and that is the asset store I, didn't, I don't really keep this one uh, docked anywhere sorry I just kind of pull it up whenever I need it now the asset store inside of unity if you don't already know is a store where you can sell your own stuff uh, ranging from extensions to you know model packs audio and you can get some pretty neat stuff in here. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting a rage spline at some point. All right, close out of this real quick. Okay, so that was a brief rundown of the interface and kind of a quick, I guess you could say overview uh, of what each does and some stuff you can do with it. Now, what if you want to rearrange it? Um, very simple uh, you just select like let's say I want to move the console actually uh, down here at the bottom you can just left click drag and then you can let it go in the center and then it becomes its own window or you can left click drag and it will try to dock as you can see at certain locations so I'm gonna put it down here and then just scale it down and now we have our console at our bottom and you can also adjust the size of the inspector pretty much everything put the console back 
the UI inside of the editor is very configurable. All right, so we have one more thing we're going to cover, and that is the widgets right here. There's four of them. You have the grab widget, or sorry, not the grab widget, the movement. This is basically middle mouse for your left mouse. They both do exactly the same thing. The next one is the move. And it allows you to obviously move any selected item uh, inside the scene. And you can also hold control to snap. All right. The next one is rotate. And you can select to rotate it along each of the three axes, axis X, Y, and Z. Or you can select in the center and do a free rotate. You can do the same with the movement tool as well. And the next one you have obviously as you can see is the scale tool. Same as before. You can move it along the XYZ axis and scale it up. Or you can uniform scale equally among all three axes by select it in the middle and then scaling. Alright, and control Z undoes. Now the hotkeys are in order. Q for the grab or pen tool. W for translate. E for rotate. And R for scale. Alright, so that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, um, stop by the forums or go on ahead and hop on my IRC, both of which are located down in the description. And if you would like to keep up to date with what I'm doing, uh, go on ahead and follow me on Twitter. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thank you.